And each time I speak, I like to begin with an attempt at humor. And uh, so here we go. A cab driver reached the pearly gates and announced his presence to St. Peter, who looked, to, <clears throat> looked up his name in the big book. This is not theologically correct, by the way. Uh, upon reading the entry for the cabbie, St. Peter invited him to grab a silk robe and a golden staff to proceed into heaven to his very large mansion. A priest was next in line behind the cabbie, and he had been watching things with interest, and he announced himself to St. Peter. Upon scanning the preacher's entry uh, in the big book, St. Pete uh, kind of furrowed his brow and said, okay, we'll let you in, but you need to take that, that, that cloth robe over there and a wooden staff. And the preacher was astonished, and he said, but, but I'm a man of the cloth. I gave <clears throat> that cab driver, and you gave that uh, cab driver a gold staff and a silk robe. Surely I rate higher than that. To that, St. Peter responded, here we are interested in results. And when you preached, everybody slept. But when the cabbie drove, everybody prayed. <laughs> so anyway, there it is. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I hope it gets better. Come on, just tell him that. I, I hope that it gets better. Well, today I want to talk to you about, and if you turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 2. Uh, uh, the book of Mark is one of the four Gospels. It's uh, one of the uh, disciples that walked with Jesus and that recorded events uh, regarding his life. And we're going to go to one of those events in a few moments in, in, in chapter 2. And we've been in the midst of a series, and our theme for this year is Accelerate, how to move forward faster in life and into God's plan for your life. Last week, we talked about how that you and I can be, well, we can be influenced by demonic spirits. We talked about that reality and that, that God wants to uh, unlock us. We can be prisoners to thoughts that are not true, influenced by demonic lying spirits that'll tell you you're not good enough, God doesn't love you, life won't change, e each of those things. And we talked about how you can move out from there and you can be free. And so if you missed any of the message so far this year, you can go into our app or you can also uh, to our website and catch up on those. And today, uh, uh, the message I want to give to you is it's a little bit different. I actually had two other ones I've been kind of working through this week, and I felt like the Lord wanted me to share this message with you. And so I wrote this up, uh, and set those aside, and I hope that it'll speak to you. Uh, the, the, the title uh, is simply this, uh, You Can't Do Life Alone. Now, all together here in the house, those online and in Centre County, can we say that together out loud? You can't do life alone. Come on, say it again. You can't do life alone. And if I could give it another title, I would say today we're going to talk about acceleration ships. Acceleration ships. In other words, relationships that accelerate your destiny and your future. I was reading uh, recently in a book uh, called It's Your Time by Joel Osteen, and he had a story uh, that I thought was interesting. He said, psychologists did a study in which they gave a group of people a mild electrical shock. How many of you like to do that to someone? Come on, just be honest. You have that person, <laughs> okay, has nothing to do with story. Let's bring it all back. Here we go. Mild electrical shock. Researchers measured their brain waves from the time that they heard they were to be shocked to the time that it was over. What's interesting is they had another group in the room that was just watching. They measured their brain waves as well, even though they were not getting the shock. They experienced the same fears as those who did get jolted. Just seeing fear in others can make us afraid, the researchers reported. A similar study found that we can catch each other's good and bad emotions as well, just like we can catch a cold. This study at Harvard followed nearly 5,000 people for more than 20 years. They found that happy people pass on their good moods to others they don't even know. And those uh, <clears throat> pass on their good moods to others they don't know. And those uh, good feelings can last as long as one year. The same study found that unhappiness can be passed as, as, as well, kind of in an affection, if you will, and it's much weaker than the happier version. See, the people that you hang out with, the environment that you are in, the, uh, the friendships that you keep, they infect you and they affect you more than you realize. You know, I was reading uh, another article that I thought was pretty uh, fascinating, and uh, just a few years ago, there was a woman 
that was found mummified in her garage sitting in her car. See, she had been there for five years. Now, this woman, she had automated all of her payments, and uh, her, 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 uh, she must have had a good amount of money uh, in her uh, account, and she had automated all of her bills. Her neighbors knew that she traveled quite a bit, so no one really took notice. No one really, really thought about it. In fact, when her grass kind of grew, they figured that she was away, and uh, they would just cut her grass for her. For five years, no one noticed that she died, and she sat there in her car, in, uh, in her garage, and everybody just kept going on with life until one day, well, she ran out of money. And the bill collectors, uh, it was actually her car payment, they wanted their payment. And a lot of people say, no one would notice if I'm gone. I always just say, just miss a payment of one of your bills. You'll find out that someone will care about the lack of your presence. And this is what happened to her. They found out and they sent someone out. She wasn't there. Finally, there was a hole in the roof. Things began to fall apart. The bank came out. They called the authorities and they found her there. Now, as I read that story, my initial thought was, wow, that's so sad. That's so sad that, that, that nobody was looking out for her, that, that nobody was caring about her. Man, what a tragic, tragic story. Then I thought about it again. I said, you know what? The real tragedy in that story is that she chose to do life alone. See, nobody chose, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Nobody chose for her to be lonely. Nobody else chose for her not to have friends. Nobody else chose for her not to be cared for. Cared for. She chose that. She chose a life that was alone, and it, that's the reason that we have that story uh, that, that, that we uh, heard or that I, I read uh, to you just a, a few moments ago. And I think about that, and you know what? That's her choice, but how many of us are making a similar choice? We're feeling lonely. We're feeling discouraged. We're wondering, you know, where's people? And, and you know, I walk into that church, and I walk out of that church, and I don't have any friends. I go to, I go to school, and I, and I go to the job, and I don't have any friends. I go and do this, and I go and do that, and I don't have any friends. And, and I just want to ask you, if that's you, why are you doing life alone? See, God has assigned people to your life and to you, your world to be acceleration ships. To relationships that will accelerate your destiny, that will move you forward, that will help you in life. But it's a decision that you and I, that we need to make. So I said, you, you can't do life alone. That's true. Uh, but you can do life alone, but you can't do life alone and fulfill the plans and purposes of God for your life. There are dozens of one another's in the Bible. In fact, uh, you know, the scripture says, love the Lord your God, that's worship, love your neighbor as yourself, that's ministry. That's uh, the first two purposes of your life, but it requires you to be in relationship with someone. So today I want to invite you to go to a story with me that's found in the book of Mark, and I want to encourage you today to open your heart in these next few moments, and I'm going to challenge you to make a decision at the end of what I'm about to share uh, today. Walt Disney, how many of you like Disney? Any Disney? Yeah. Walt Disney said, you can design and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. See, you and I, we choose who we will partner with to create the future that God has for us. Whenever we remove the wrong people out of our lives, <laughs> the wrong things stop happening. People, they can hold you back or they can hold you up and push you forward. Every incredible opportunity or plan meant to, to promote you or destroy you will always come disguised as a relationship. That's why we need to evaluate every relationship in our lives. Now, here's a thought. It's easier to settle for average than it is to strive for achievement. It's easier to be saturated with complacency than to be stirred with compassion. It's easier to be skeptical than it is to be successful. It's easier to question than to conquer. And it's easier to rationalize your disappointment than to realize your dreams. But I want to invite you to not do what's easy. I want to invite you to make a decision this year to do what may seem difficult and to get out of your own world and say, God, I pray that you would help me this year not to do life 
alone. This story that we're going to go to, I think, will encourage you and it will help you. Mark chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, it's about to get slap your mama good. Come on, tell him that if you would. Come on, like you had a Red Bull this morning. You know, you know, turn to your other neighbor, and to your second choice, and just tell him, you look good today. Come on, just give him some love. If you're single, this is your moment. Here we go. Verse 1, when Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men, everybody say four men. Come on, do it again. Everybody say four men. Four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head, and then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Let's pause for a moment. This guy was paralyzed. We don't know for how long. We we don't know the, the, the background. We just know that he couldn't move forward in life because he was stuck Maybe uh, he, he was paralyzed from birth. Maybe it was an accident. Maybe today you relate to that and say, you know what, I've been paralyzed with fear. I've been paralyzed with discouragement. I've been paralyzed with depression. All we know was he couldn't get to Jesus with his need and with his issue. And, and, I, and I love this because all of a sudden he had four friends that Ubered him all the way to Jesus. They picked him up and they walked him. They walked him to Jesus. And and I love this because they get there, the place is packed, there's no room, and they didn't give up and they didn't give in. They must have been rednecks because they're like, let's go dig a hole in the roof, right? I mean, it's just so funny. You think about this. Uh, We're going to get you in front of Jesus. Hop on your mat. You're going to bungee down, and it's going to be amazing. And they went up in the middle of the sermon and began digging through the roof, which Jesus must must have had just amazing focus because how do you know that would be a little distracting. As he's preaching, all of a sudden, the roof opens up and they let this guy down on his on his mat. We'll call him Matt. We don't know his name. So Matt came down and he's sitting directly in front of Jesus. Now, before we go to the rest of the story, I, I love this part. I, I love this first part because Because his friends said, you know what, we're going to do everything that we can to bring you to Jesus. Remember last week we talked about the the, the guy that laid there for 38 years with no one to help him. And I think that's easy for you and I to do in our lives. We can go through life and we can be surrounded with people. But we can find ourselves in a place where we have no one to help us in our time of need. Yet you contrast that man that was, that was ultimately healed by Jesus uh, that we spoke of last week in John 5, and, and you go to the scripture in Mark 2, and you hear about this, this man that his, his friends loved him so much they carried him. We don't know what sort of distance. We don't know how heavy he was. All we know is they picked him up and said, come on, man, we're going to go, we're going to get to Jesus. And then they removed every barrier that they could think of to make sure that he could get connected and experience the love of God and the healing of Jesus. And I just want to ask you very simply today, uh, do you have friends like that? Do you have people that will carry your burdens? Do you have people in your world that will carry you when, when life has paralyzed you, when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, when you don't know what to do and you don't know which way to turn? Do you have people say, come on, I know you're injured. I, I know you're hurting. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to help you. We're going to bring this to Jesus because I know there's a God in heaven that can change everything. Do you have friends like that? And let me ask you a second question. Are you a friend like that? See, I believe if you want to accelerate and you want to move forward faster into your destiny, then you need to open your eyes and see that God assigned people in your world that are there to help you and to bring you to the God appointment and to fulfill the dream that he's placed on the inside of you. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man in verse 5, he said, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law, they saw who were sitting there And they thought to themselves, what's he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins because they didn't believe about Jesus. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. 
So he read their minds and he, and he asked, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I'll prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. So Jesus turned to Matt and he said, hey, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Immediately the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, walked down, out through the stunned onlookers, and they were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. We've never seen anything like this before. They were amazed. Now, obviously, Jesus did what only Jesus could do. But it's amazing what his friends did to help him experience Jesus. I just, I just want to encourage you today. I just want to challenge you today. I want to hopefully maybe inspire you a little bit. If you're living life alone, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? There are people all throughout our church that are amazing people, chosen, called, and gifted by God for you. That God is assigned into your life and to your world. And when you, when you serve, man, you get to meet those people. When you join a small group, you get to connect with those people. And they help carry you and Uber you all the way to the place that you need where when you're broken and when you're discouraged and you don't know what to do, you're not sitting home with bonbons all alone filling up on, on, on self-pity, but you're full of the presence of God, full of the Spirit of God, saying, you know what? I know I can call, and they're going to help me call in the name of the Lord, and everything is going to be okay. See, God wants the, you can clap. Come on, that's, that's good. Center County, you can clap too. God wants and has assigned those people into your life, into your world. You just got to pause long enough, open your heart and open your eyes and say, God, would you give me those relationships so I can see them this year? I want it to be different. I believe that God wants you, so many amazing people in this room, so many amazing people in our church, you can be that kind of friend to someone else. So I'm going to share just a, a couple thoughts with you, four things that you need from your well, from your acceleration ships that you need from friends they are going to help you move forward faster into the destiny that God has for you. So I want you to jump over with me. We'll come back to that story in a moment. But I want you to jump over with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Psalms, chapter 1. I want to read it in the New Living Translation, and then I want to break it down the Amplified for just a moment. Break it down. Oh, here we go. Psalm, chapter 1. Oh, the joys. Everybody say joys. Oh, come on. Everybody say, Joyce. Oh, the joys. When the Philadelphia Eagles win. I'm just kidding. Okay, here we go. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with the mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves, they never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They're like worthless chaps scattered by the wind. They'll be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. The Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Kind of out of this passage, I want to unwrap and unravel for just a few moments. So uh, just right now, just, you know, Plug in your seatbelt, get ready. We're going to go somewhere, somewhere. and I want you to, to get your app out and, and, and take some notes or get your program uh, out and take some notes about this. I want to give you four types uh, or four things that you need from your friends this year, the type of people that you need to have in your world. So let me give you a little caveat to that for just a moment. All of us have, uh, uh, we have EGR people in our lives. Extra grace required. You know what I'm talking about? There's people in your life, you love them, you just don't love to see them very often. Come on, can, are you with me? They're, come on, we all have, let's be honest, we all have people in our world, they're there, and you're like, God, you have a sense of humor. You know, that's true. But, the, and we, the funny thing is, we may be that for other people as well. But here, here's the thing. I want to encourage you to consider the type of person that you need to become so that you can be the, the miracle in someone else's life this, this year, so that you can carry them forward faster. And I want you to consider the type of people 
that you need in your world. Now, Jesus hung out with everybody. He was a friend of sinners. So you and I, we need to love everybody. Those out of the family of God, we need to carry them to the family of God, remove every barrier that we can so they can experience the love and the power that's found in Jesus. We also need people in our world that are close to us, that don't hold us back, but they push us forward. And so how do we find those, those people? Number one, I want you to write this down. You need friends. Everybody say friends. Come on, all together. Everybody say friends. You need friends that are full of wisdom for you. Proverbs 12, 26 says, A righteous man is cautious in friendship, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Last week, we talked about how you can be under the influence of demonic that the supernatural always plays itself out in the natural. Because someone's good to you doesn't mean they're good for you. You need to consider your your connections. You need to consider your relationships. You need to consider those that you place in close proximity of your world. You know, studies even show that the closest friends that you have generally make the same amount of money because you, you just... You're drawn to people like you. But maybe, maybe God wants you to not, not, not lose all your friends, but maybe he wants to bring some new friends into your world this year that will help elevate your thinking. They'll come from a different perspective. They'll have greater wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. Now, I said wisdom from God. Now, there's two types of wisdom that the Bible teaches. In the book of James, it says there's wisdom from below that's earthly wisdom, and it's satanic of origin. That type of wisdom just says, hey, you know what? You don't, you don't need to be connected with God's people. You don't need to read the Bible. You can know God, however. You don't, you don't need all that stuff. Always distracting and trying to pull you away from the people of God. But godly wisdom always points you to God's word, and it builds your life. Wisdom is simply this. It's anointed common sense. It's knowing what God wants you to do and then choosing to do it. Wise people seek out God, what do you want? And then they choose to do it. And in Psalm chapter 1, it says, if you want to be blessed, if you want to move forward faster, here's the type of people you need in your world. It says this, blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly following their advice, their plans, and purpose. In other words, stop listening to people that don't know what they're talking about. Stop taking advice about marriage from someone that is going through a divorce. Stop taking financial advice from someone that's broke and in debt. Come on, are you with me? This is simple, but we do this sometimes. We start listening to the wrong voices. And what he's saying, if you want to be blessed, if you want to be for, you want the right things, you got to get the right people in. So stop hanging with people and taking advice from people that do not know what they're talking about. Get wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. The Bible says wisdom will build your house and understanding. He who walks with the wise will be wise, but the companion of fools will not be destroyed. I'm not talking about little anecdotes. I'm not talking about the, the obvious. So, you know, don't, your friend tells you don't pee on an electric fence. Of course not. God wants to give you the wisdom that will move you forward faster and help you to discern what God wants you to do. Here's the second thing. Friends that are full of passion. Everybody say passion. Come on. Everybody say Passion passion for God. You know, the word enthusiasm comes from the Greek word entheos. It means God within. When you have, man, when you have God on the inside of you, then there's something that happens. There's a passion that's released. When you have people around you that are passionate, they make you better. They challenge you more. I thank God for passionate people in my world. Listen to what it says in verse 1. It says, okay, don't take counsel from the ungodly. And listen to what it says here. Nor stands in the path where sinners walk. And in the, mess, or in the uh, Amplified, it says submissive and inactive. Man, that could be said about uh, many of, uh, uh, much of church in America. <laughs> inactive. Around every once in a while, but not bought in. 
not passionate, not carrying people to Jesus. I mean, the reality is, is that found people find people. We, we, we leave the 99 to go after the one. That's, that's what Jesus did. And also found people understand you can't do life alone. It's not just about, uh, you know, what happens in, in church and in our culture in America. It's all about, okay, did I like the message? Am I being fed? Am I happy with this? Am I happy? I, 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 me, me, me. And we have I chair Christians that it's all about them. When God says, no, life is not all about you or me, but it's all about him and bringing his kingdom to earth and using our lives, connecting with others to make a difference while we are still sucking oxygen on this earth. See, God wants to use you. God wants to use your life, and he wants you to be full of passion. But here's what happens. Oftentimes we get around, and the closest people in our world, they'll just excuse things. They they, they won't really encourage us. They'll just kind of be there, inactive, not really passionate. How would your life be different right now if you had people that were pushing you forward in your relationship with Jesus? Hey, are you in a 21-day fast? What are you believing for? What are you asking God for? Man, what have you been reading? What, what's God been teaching you as you've opened the Word of God that's alive and living and powerful? What did the Holy Spirit speak to you? What would change in your life if you had people like that encouraging you right now? I suggest to you that we have a church full of people like that. And if you just make a decision and say, you know what, I'll jump into a small group. You know what, I'll serve. I'll open myself up. I won't just walk in and walk out. I won't just go through life, woe is me, and I'm lonely and whining. Nobody cares, wah, wah, wah. But I say, God, 7 billion people, you've assigned someone for me. God, 7 billion people, I know there's some people on the planet that love you, that are passionate for you, and they will carry me. They'll help me. They'll be there for me. And I can do that with someone else. I believe that God wants to open up your world this year with that sort of thing. Friendships, they never leave you where you are. They make you better. Or they make you worse. First Corinthians says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Here's the third thing quickly. Psalm 1 verse 1 goes on to say, nor sits down where the scornful gather. Or in the Amplified it says, nor sits down to relax and rest, hanging out where the mockers are. If you have friends that all you do is joke around and bust on each other and all those different things, like that's cool when you're 10. But if you're going to make it to the destiny that God has for you, you need to get some people that don't just talk about your current activity or the way that you live your life today. You need to get people in your world that will prophesy your destiny. They'll say, you're a great man of God. Man, God's doing amazing things through you. I believe in you. I'm with you. I'll carry you. I'll help you. Man, I'll walk through this life with you. If you desire that and you ask God for that, he'll give it to you. But remember, he also wants you to be that for others. My daughter, McKenna, she's eight years old. And uh, it goes with this this next thought. Because if you're not going to be hanging out with the mockers, it means you're going to be hanging out with the encouragers. People to speak life and encourage into you. 1 Thessalonians 5.8 says, encourage each other. Build each other up just as you're already doing. My daughter McKenna, <clears throat> we were getting ready to watch a movie last night together as a family. And uh, she was busy. She was coloring. And I said, honey, what are you doing? Why don't you come on over and we can snuggle and, and, and hang out because when kids get older, they don't snuggle, so you've got to redeem the time. Come on, parents. You know what I'm talking about. And she said, daddy, I'm busy. I said, okay, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm, I'm coloring. I said, what are you coloring? She said, well, I had all these little cards I'd found that, that grandma had given me, and I'm coloring them. And this one says, <clears throat> excuse me, says, life is beautiful. Enjoy every minute of today. And I started reading them. They're all like just scriptures and little words of encouragement. I said, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm coloring them because I want to bring them to church with me tomorrow. And I'm just going to pass them out to people and make them feel good. And I said, aren't you the sweetest little thing in the world? Pass that on to the rest of your siblings. I'm kidding. I'm teasing. (laughs) Sort of. I said, you know what? Out of the mouth of babes, the kingdom of heaven (laughs) is like a child. I said, you know, it's so powerful. 
And I thought to myself, okay, who am I going to encourage today? Where I'm not so caught up in my own world, my own needs. We can have them. Pray, but it's not that we don't have our own needs and think about our world. It's just that we don't spend all of our time thinking about our world and our own needs. It's that we actually take some time and we consider and we think about others and how to promote them, how to help them, how to encourage them, how to love others that can't repay you, how to carry other people to Jesus that could not get there without you. Well, I'm trying to bring them to church. That's okay. Bring church to them. They may never show up here, but you're there full of the love of God, full of the Spirit of God, and you can love them and open up God's Word. Your life is a gift waiting to happen. You can make a difference. You can change someone's world this year, and I, I'm telling you, whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. Man, when you sow that into others, it will come back to you. God wants you to be an encourager. He wants you to make a decision to, to think about giving encouragement to others. There's a story maybe you've heard before. Chuck Swindoll, who's an amazing uh, pastor and leader and learned uh, a lot of things from his books and commentaries. He wrote this story a few years ago. He said, there was an eagle that fell out of its nest as a young chick and it nearly died. Except a farmer found him and put him in with his flock of turkeys. As he grew, the eagle mimicked everything he saw from making turkey sounds to pecking for food on the ground. And of course, he never tried to fly because turkeys don't fly. One day, the eagle stood with the turkeys, and he heard something high in the air. It was an eagle that was soaring above the clouds, making eagle screeches. It was at that moment that the eagle on the ground felt a stirring to spread his wings and to join the high-flying eagle. But the turkey next to him said, what are you thinking? Turkeys don't fly. And with that, the eagle on the ground sighed went back to pecking on the ground for the rest of his life. The moral of the story, it's hard to fly with eagles when you're always living with a bunch of turkeys. Interesting thought, the power of your friends, the power of the spoken word over your life, the power that's in that story in Mark chapter 2. I mean, Jesus heals. That's an amazing story. He always heals. But what's amazing to me is those friends that said, we're going to do whatever we take to help you and to get you to Jesus. God wants to give you those type of friends this year. And he wants you to be that type of friend this year to someone else. Would you you stand with me all over the room? My last thought, and you can write this down. It'll be online as well. It's just friends that are, you need friends that are planted in God's word and God's house. Psalm 1 goes on to read, it says, But he delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his precepts, his teachings. He habitually meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in its season. Its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers or comes to maturity. We need to get into God's word. That's that's our responsibility. Devotionals are good, don't get me wrong. Books by other people, they're fantastic. But there's nothing that takes the place of the Word of God. And you say, well, Sam, I don't understand it. That's okay, we'll help you. Just tell us. Hey, I could use some help with this. We have stuff online. We have all kinds of helps. You can go to our, our, our First Steps class. We'll walk you through it. When you open up this book and understand that God says this Word is alive, it is powerful, and it will speak to you, When you open this book this week, I'm telling you, something's going to happen in your life and in your heart. But what would happen if it wasn't just you reading, if it just wasn't you studying, but you got with others that helped bring you to Jesus? And they begin to help you understand God's Word. You got into a group and you begin to talk about, man, the mysteries of the ages that God reveals through His Word. That Word that can, it can heal you. It can forgive you. It can change you. It can prosper you. That, that Word that is sent forth and does not return void. Whatever you need, that Word is. Whatever you're desiring, that Word fulfills. When you get into that Word, man, and what would happen if you got with others? How would your life and your world change? I want to invite you. You can do life alone, 
But you can't do life alone if you're going to fulfill the plans and purposes of God. We need one another. So here's my cry for our church this year, that we would not be people that are all about ourselves, that we wouldn't just write a check and go on our way. It's great when we give, and that's awesome. But God wants us to give our lives. He wants us to give our hearts. He wants us to carry people that are in need. He wants us to be those kinds of friends. And if you're going to find them, you need friends that are planted in God's Word. And Psalm 92 says that are planted in God's house. Psalm 92, 13 says those who are planted, their roots grow deep. They don't just show up every once in a while, but they grow up and they're apart and they're connected and they're passionate and they're going after it for the, for the kingdom of God. They've made a decision to be those kinds of people. Those that are planted in the, in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. Whatever you're willing to walk away from determines what God is willing to bring to you. If you want the right friends in your life, you got to maybe walk away from some of the wrong ones. Love them. Be friendly. But if you want to fly with eagles, you can't just hang out with the turkeys. In other words, Jesus was a friend of sinners, but the people he spent his most time with were his disciples. God wants you to invest relational equity into the people that he has assigned to accelerate your future so that you can leave those moments and you can change the world. I want to invite you this year, Center County, those joining us online, here in the house today, would you be that kind of friend to someone that would carry people to Jesus? Would you find those kind of friends? Because I'm telling you, there's going to be days where you feel like Jesus is a million miles away. He's not, but you're going to need the right people and the right voices surrounding your life to help you. That's truly a gift from God. It's a gift that he wants to give to you this year to accelerate your future. Would you bow your heads with me? Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to our online experience. It's our prayer that you experience the freedom and life that only God has to offer. I want you to know that God loves you, that he's for you, and as you trust in Jesus, your greatest days are out in front of you. If there's anything we can do to support you or encourage you, don't hesitate to email us at hope at freedomlife.tv. Thanks so much for tuning in once again. Have a great day.